Right, we're down here in Plymouth today with Ford SAC. This is Rob Batten. Um, we're about to do some mullet fishing. Now, I've done mullet fishing before in the past, and um, to be honest, the, what are normally the methods of targeting mullet is off the flow. That's all I've ever obviously used to target the mullet. But these guys today are about to show us a different method of catching mullet. So, uh, Rob, what's uh, the general equipment you're going to be using today? Probably my favourite choice to use. There's a Dara Porky Peg, beautiful rod to use. You can pick them up fairly cheap. Not very common, but if you have a good look around and you're waiting for the right bargain to come up, you will pick one up. Uh, lovely balanced rod with a nice three, three or four thousand size uh, reel. My personal choice, uh, Shimano Sahara 4000 GTE. It's a lovely reel, nice fighting drag system on it. And it does go well with a big mullet on. We're now going to go on to my other club member, Luke Johns, fellow fishing partner and co. He's going to show you how to design the brakes that will hopefully pick you up a few mullet. Hello, I'm another member of the Ford Hotel Sea Angling Club. My name's Luke Johns. We're here today to show you how to ledger for mullet using a simple two up pattern oster. I've got in front of me a basic, basic selection of the components you can use to make the two up pattern oster, starting from the trace body. We, we prefer to use tri line, just as tried and tested. Three way swivels, one ounce pair lead, and size eight partridge hooks. A simple pair of scissors or snips would be fine to construct the main body of the trace. It's consistently short length through the whole trace. Start off with the main body, tie the top swivel. Once you've got your top swivel on, you want to put your bottom swivel on, which needs to be about between 8 to 12 inches between, between the two hook lengths. As you see, about, it's about eight inches long, it's about the standard sort of size. Then you come to your hook lengths, just cut a, a loosely cut bit. Oh, tied to each adjacent part of the swivel, you're snood for, the, for your hook length. When I, was, when I was taught to mullet fish by a friend of ours, I was taught to make the hook length about the size of your palm, which is a re relatively easy concept to go to. So you take a size 8 partridge hook, and do a simple grin and As you tie in your hook length, it's quite crucial to try and keep the hook length to, to, the, to the length of your palm. As you see now, the hook length is roughly the size of my palm, and that's the sort of given length we all sort of aim for. It's still nice and flowing. It's not, it's not dead pin to the floor. It just gives that little bit of movement. So you've got that little bit of movement with the tide or flow or whatever you're fishing into. Just instead of it completely laid flat, it just gives you that little bit of, little bit of motion just to present the bait better. Trim the tag ends, and the same onto the bottom hook. Tie the main line off the swivel that's coming out of the, the side.
Same again with the hook planks, try and keep them at a consistent length with the palm again. They're consistently sort of same length for the top. And now for, now for the lead length, just about the, the similar sort of length between the, the two swivels. Just tie straight onto your three-way swivel. On it roughly the same length as that give or take sort of thing, and then straight onto your lead. Once you've trimmed your tag ends, you've got the basic lead trim rig for a two-work pattern oster that myself and many of my teammates have used as a very successful method of catching mullet of, of various various sizes from the seabed using for lead drilling. So what we got here is a basic rig which you would use for like targeting whiting etc to a flapper off a beach. Yeah we, we use this rig in many different variants for, for lots of different species. With the size of obviously the length of the trace is really short it's like a like a sole rig really isn't it? Yeah basically similar sort of thing maybe up a, up, definitely up a poundage of the line up the size of the hooks but it's the, the same rig for many different species. I'm actually looking very forward to fishing this way for mullet because obviously when they take off they actually take off. I was um, introduced to the fish by a friend of mine, Jordan Cove, a few years ago and um, first trip, my best fish of the trip was 4.8 and um, I know these guys have had bigger fish from the venue we're fishing today. Yeah. What's your personal best of the well, my, my personal best is 4.6 from this venue but there's been, there's been bigger recently of a 4.10 and possibly a 5.9 from the, this, this area so it's, it's many big fish to be had in Some this cracking location. Cracking fish, but um, for bait wise, what baits can you use for targeting mullet? The, the main one is bread really. Yeah. Just the standard. Don't use, a, I mean, use maggots or different things, worms. You or... can you can put it all into your, your chum mix, which Rob Batten is going to show us soon. But your, your main hook bait is just bread, really. Yeah. Fingers crossed, we get a few fish on this tonight. Then. Right then, Rob, you're about to show us a basic ground bait uh, to use. What's the reason, obviously, you use ground bait for a targeting bullet? Well, normally. Some aspects won't need ground bait. If a fish, if you arrive at your mark and the fish are feeding, yeah. you, you will more than likely pull one out. Yeah. They will spook eventually. But a ground bait, if you're fishing in a tidal, very tidal area and you can get your ground bait now to the bottom, yeah. it will, the fish will come in on the scent. They will pull them in on the scent as they're going by. And Trick is with mullet to get them feeding, isn't it? Yeah, if yeah. you get them feeding, you're in for a good, good very, very good time. They will go. So, what we got here then, mate? Right, to start with, you've got your basic, which is your bread, which does help to thicken up the ground bait. You can add any type of flavourings. Here we've got um, a glug, which is just just puts a bit of scent with it. Which, uh, we've got your pineapple, coconut, and some strawberry to sweeten the taste. We've also got a bit of competition liquid, pellet and ground bait. And you've got your good old brown sauce. It does add a bit of scent to the water with it. Brown sauce? Yeah, brown sauce. Does that actually work, yeah? It does work, it's proven. Yeah? Yeah, we've tried and tested and it does work. It's it amazing what um, you obviously people put in, because obviously when I'm doing ground baiting for um, when I'm float fishing normally, I normally like get a mackerel, put it in a liquidizer, yeah. Just get loads and loads of bread and like fish guts and as much putrid uh, oil, yeah. as much scent obviously I can into the water before obviously targeting. But yeah, we do use, we do use that method out on the coast a lot, which can work, but it does attract your mackerel and your garfish yeah, as well, which can be a pest. But Down in here. brackish water and 
an asterisk, the brown sauce does the trick. So mate, the venue you're at, what is your uh, PB? My personal best from this venue, landed, is £4.10. I have fish, landed mate. much bigger yeah. for other people, unfortunately. Yeah. But what about there is a good chance to Best make. mullet off? My overall best mullet landed, four, uh, £4.13. <laughs> much much bigger. Yeah. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, yeah, so for, for obviously time. anybody was thinking about going out and targeting mullet, what's what's the best time of year or is it you can go out and target them from like any anywhere from end of April, providing the water temperature lifts, um through right through to the well to January, yeah. December, January. Yeah. They do come off a of feed a lot. Uh, as as the temperatures drop and we uh, start getting the frosts. But for the big fish, it's when normally autumn arrives. Autumn for the big, pick big, up fish. big fish. Yeah. So any for venues for obviously anybody who's looking at watching the video and wants to go out and target a few mullet, back of back of the estuaries. Um, yeah, any quiet creeks, estuaries, um, harbour walls. Harbour walls that do attract a lot of fish, but can get fairly busy. Yeah. Um, anywhere where you're going to meet brackish water and it's tidal, you will find your mullet. You will get them everywhere, but yeah. brackish water in the estuaries will, will hold a lot of fish. Do you find it better in the evenings or in the daytimes? Or um, obviously bass fishing, you want to be out first thing and last thing, obviously. Uh, first, light, first light is a very good time. You will pick them up right through the day, you will get them right through the night. It can be slightly more difficult during the night, but. My favourable time is either first light or dusk. Dusk. Dusk is what it is now. Right then, so we go through this and um, show the guys what you're going to do now. Yeah, firstly we'll start with the bread. Just go in with the water. Just generally break it up. Let it soak up the water nicely. Gradually work it into the water. You can also use oak. Oats do help to cloud up the water. Fish will home in on it. But bread, bread is normally a favourable solution. Last couple of slices. Make the ground baits as big as you want. But for a short session, don't need a very big bait. fine as you can get it. Breadcrumbs blended normally. Blended normally bare but for a sloppy mix. Just break up a loaf and mash it up. Now you get your other ingredients so it gives the ground bait a bit of scent. Fish oil men on it especially when it's in dark murky water. You got your pineapple, give that a little. Slow bit of coconut. And a little bit of strawberry, just to sweeten the taste. fish are in for a real treat. And lastly, a good old fashioned brown sauce. And there we have it. 
and you mix this one up. It doesn't always work in every area, but the area we're fishing today, any brackish water, murky water where the fish have to have a scent, does normally do the trick. So now the ground bait's almost finished, the equipment's all set up, ready to go, let's go fishing. 